In this first video, we're just going to go over a few things to set up AutoCAD to be uh, well suited for use with my template. So the first thing we're going to do is go to Options, Profiles, and I already have my profile set up. Now I've mentioned, I might have mentioned in my preview for my CAD standards that I actually set these up for a white background, or in my case a light off-white background. So one thing you might want to do here is, if you don't already have AutoCAD set up similar to mine, is create a new profile, one for a white or light background, and then one for your dark background. So one thing I do is if I'm making changes, I'll make a second profile name. I'll go to Apply and Close. I'll switch to this profile, make all my changes, and then if I feel the need, I'll delete this old profile right here. That's um, it's basically for me, that's the easiest way to, I guess, overwrite or delete an existing profile. So I'll just delete that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look into is the display settings. Okay, so from the display tab, you're going to go into colors. Now I'll include this with the template. I'm going to have a file here that's going to show you all of my settings. Now I see a note down here. This also applies to my display and colors. These are mere suggestions. You can see I use an off-white background. 255, 255, 255 would be um, uh, completely white like this background. But as you might have noticed, my AutoCAD is just barely off-white. So you don't have to go through all of these settings. And even, for example, the tooltip, I, I don't actually use that. So you might want to change it. You might you might want to leave it alone. But I've, uh, I've given settings for that. And now you can export profiles. And that there's even a way to make an autolisp command that would change this for you. But it would, if I did that, it would likely also change settings that you didn't want it to change. So I just decided to leave it as the as is and just offer this up as just a suggestion in case you don't know what to plug in here. These will be a good starting point, but I'm sure as you start drafting, you might have your own preferences. You might tweak this a little bit, and I totally encourage doing that. Everyone's a little bit different, or our eyes work a little differently. We all have different monitors. So yeah, go ahead. After a while, if you don't like my settings, um, tweak these a little bit. So down here, again, I have all these variable settings. Now, most of these are just suggestions. A few of these will affect the auto list commands. I'm going to show you how to use in an upcoming video. As you notice, my uh, insertion units, the ints units variable, I have one for inches, four for millimeters. That will affect the auto list commands. And some of this other stuff, the UCS follow, it might need to be set to one for some auto list commands to work. And then the LT scale, I put it at 25 for metric. That's kind of a, I don't want to say it's a lazy person solution. It's just I always I always have trouble finding the, the line styles file for metric. So I just use basically the imperial um, line type file, and I just apply the metric settings to it. So anyways, if you have any questions about the, these uh, settings, just leave, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, so the last thing I have to show you before wrapping up part one of this video series is the files, trusted locations. You have to add a directory here and that directory will be wherever you're storing your Lisp files. Obviously, if you're not using the Lisp commands, you don't have to worry about this. But if you load a Lisp command, from a directory that's not in your trusted locations, you'll get an alert box coming up. And that's not so bad if you do it just once in a while, but if you do it all the time and you always have to click OK and the, the chime comes up, that gets kind of old, right? So it just you'll just add, you'll browse to your directory. Now I store my Lisp files in C Drive, AutoCAD local files, and then Lisp. You can store them when, wherever you want. I don't have any... Um, any directories hard-coded into the Lisp files themselves. I do have multiple directories here. Don't worry about that. I'm just doing a, a lot of work, so I have all the 
list files for these templates placed in a subfolder for now, but um, you'll divide your folders up as needed. Maybe you'll, you'll only need one folder, maybe you'll have multiple for folders. That's up, up to you, obviously, right? So anyways, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. In the next video, I'm going, going to cover how to actually load the list files.